I, I'm working on a story. Now, I have a habit of saying I, and I don't mean to. It's, it's a we and there is a team. So when, when you hear me say that, just forgive me in, a, in advance. I'm actually trying to change that within my vocabulary, but I got a partner, we got a production company and here we are on YouTube. We see you guys every day, but we've done other things. We've done things that you have seen. And you would only know it's enough as us if you stuck around and waited for the credits, but I'm just sharing with you. You would always try to look and find a story. Right? If, if you have a goal of being an executive producer and you're willing to take the risk, you're willing to go out and make something, have it what we call the can, fund everything, and then go shop it, then go to Netflix, then go to Peacock in this case, because they've got the rights through NBC of the Olympic Games, and I'm discussing Rulon Gardner. Remember him? 2000 Olympic gold medalist, but... To win that Olympic gold medal, Rulon pulled off the biggest upset in sports history. The biggest upset in Olympic history. That was in 2000, everything changes. One year, everything changes in sport. That was 23 years ago. It is still believed by all to be the biggest upset in Olympic history. Big deal, right? So Rulon, there's his moment. Beat Alexander Karelin, the Russian great, the undefeated going for his 12th straight World and Olympic Championship. Anyway, Rulon beat him, one to nothing. Not only did Rulon beat him, Gorelin couldn't score a single point. Now, Rulon only got one, but Gorelin, the greatest ever, didn't get any. A lot to be proud of there by Rulon. I'm gonna tell you this story very fast, but when Rulon retires, and he actually stuck around for another cycle, when Rulon retired, there was things that happened that became news. I mean, just by example, Rulon, who grew up in Wyoming, went to school out in Nebraska, currently lives in Utah. What, what do those all have in common? The elements, right? So he's an outdoor guy. He gets into something called snowmobiling. Goes out on the snowmobile, whatever happens, he gets stranded in the snow. When they finally find him, hypothermia, frostbite, and they had to remove, they had to amputate three of his toes. And quite frankly, as tough as that might sound, he's lucky, he real lucky. What happened to Rulon, what happened to Evan Tanner, just for perspective, is essentially the same thing in reverse elements. One lost his life, one lost three toes. So when I tell you, lucky, but you could see where that would be. Life changing for an athlete, more than most, to this day, I never heard Rulon complain, not once. I never heard a poor me out of him. He's a very religious man. I don't know if that's because of his faith. I don't know. Maybe he's just a optimist, half class full at all times. I don't know. He lost three toes. I never heard him complain. Okay, let's fast forward. Rulon goes on to, and he did all of these things. If you're not familiar with Rulon Gardner, maybe I'm taking some exceptions here. He did this at heavyweight, he's a big guy. So, as he slows his sports career down and he doesn't burn as many calories, he's got the same habits of putting calories in, he gains some weight. We all do, right? Ends up on a show called The Biggest Loser, NBC. And Rulon's doing a great job. He's representing, he's representing wrestling, but he's also a master in what we call cutting weight. Now, if you've heard that term, you likely couldn't tell me what it is. And there's zero chance that you've ever done it. Cutting weight is exclusive to a sport or profession that weighs you in. There is not, right? Bodybuilding, MMA, boxing, there's nothing in the world where they weigh you in before they let you go do it. You would be, you would be sued so quickly as an employer, if you try to do that, well, there is one craft and Rulon was good at doing something called cutting weight. So he took some of the experiences and knowledge that he had and the biggest loser didn't love that. They didn't love it. Okay, fine. Fast forward, here we are right now, 2023, which is a massive year if you have Olympic fever and believe me, all former athletes have Olympic fever. What are you gonna do with it? Is it gonna win or are you gonna, 
suppress it, right? It's one of those things. Do you have the courage to follow through? The answer with Rulon is yes. But if you are an aspiring Olympian, and this is a two-time former Olympian, he got a gold and he got a bronze. I mean, real deal here, right? If you're an aspiring Olympian, the way the rules and the process works, the prior year, which is 2023 that we're in right now, is massively important to the process and to the qualifications and to the likelihood of you making the team. So Rulon's back. Rulon's back. He's got he's Paris 2024, ultimate goal, steps along the way, and... When he comes back, his uh, I get word of this the day before he's got a match, which is two months ago. The day before this match, I get word that Rulon Gardner's back and he's wrestling tomorrow. I jump on a plane, I go out there. He's taking on Jacob Mitchell, who three years ago was the US Open champion. He's a junior college national. The guy's got three or four national championships. It's a hard match. And nobody, and I do mean nobody, could take 20 years off from the sport of wrestling and come back and take on an opponent that was the champion three years ago and win. As a matter of fact, not only could they not win, they, they could not finish the match. As, as a matter of fact, could they not finish the match, they would end up in the emergency room. Well, except Rulon except in the sport of Greco-Roman, except in the United States, and except at heavyweight right now. He was okay. He protected himself at all times. He finished the match. It ended up a draw. So, Rulon's back. I mean, there's no, there's no denying it now. Fast forward, right, that was two months ago, fast forward to this morning. So U.S. Open, first step of the process to 2023, but 2023 being the first step of the process to the games in 24. U.S. Open, Rulon, trains for it, flies out for it, and pre-registers the way wrestling works. They used to be able to just show up. You can do a Kale Sanderson in 2011. Everybody could see you and just assume you're there to coach. You could throw registration card down, hop on the scale, you're in the bracket, right? Not like that anymore. Got to pre-register. Rulon pre-registered. This made national news. TMZ picked it up, their big store out of Spike Sample. And Rulon did some interviews. He was very proud of himself. A lot of people were very excited. The scale beat him. Scale beat him. Rulon's never hit this. Like this, this doesn't embarrass him like it would some people. Rulon is very open to let you know that his relationship with food and some of the struggles that he has with his weight are very real. Doesn't embarrass him at all. But the, the dirtiest word in dieting, and this is coming from a guy who wrote a book, who wrote a diet book, okay? New York bestseller. The dirtiest word in dieting is time. You can't get people to come in. You can't get them to do your program. You can't get them to join your gym. If you tell them the truth, which is, it takes time. It's not an instant gratification. And you fasting for two hours and then wanting to go get on a scale and being depressed because it hasn't moved. I mean, right? it's, it's one of these things that takes time. And Rulon, who started this journey two months ago, simply didn't have enough time. Give him a little more time, add to this process, Rulon's gonna be back.